My goal with this video is not to show you some overused strategy to earn a mediocre score on the SAT writing. Instead, I'm going to show you exactly what I did to go from making over 20 mistakes on each SAT writing section that I took to earning a near perfect score on the final exam. First, I want you to drill this concept into your mind. The SAT writing section is more like the math section than the reading section. The writing section is defined by rules, just like math. Instead, in the writing section, you're focusing on grammar rules and reading rules. Once you know the rules and you know them well, you will be able to answer far more questions correctly and with consistency. Secondly, if you're an ambitious student in high school and you're aiming for a near-perfect score just like I did, well then I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. The top scores have their score structure set out like this. The math section, we all know that if you want to aim for a 1550 plus score, you need to be able to get it down to near perfect. The next section that's easiest to control is the writing section. The thing about the reading section, when you're looking at all of these different passages, is that if you happen to get a passage that's very difficult, it can be hard to truly program the way that you're studying in order to account for everything. You can't control if you get one difficult passage that leads to you missing a question or two. However, you can absolutely control whether or not you know where a comma goes in a sentence. For that reason, the way we're going to structure our score in order to maximize it is we're going to aim for a perfect score on the math and we're going to aim for a perfect score on the writing. Once you know the concepts and you truly put in the practice, just like you would for math, learning the different formulas and practicing the different problems, it is absolutely feasible to get there regardless of where you start. In order to master the SAT writing section, you need to get the grammar rules down. You know this because people say it in every YouTube video. Here we're going to focus on exactly how you actually do that. I'm going to be fully honest with you. At no point in high school did I ever fully understand how independent and dependent clauses work. I, whenever I would look at these different grammar rules for when commas are supposed to be placed, when semicolons, when colons, it would always just get jumbled up in my head. I could never remember it straight. If you find yourself in a similar predicament or you just want to get a new way of looking at these things, I really, really recommend you go check out this Princeton Review textbook. The thing about the writing section of this textbook is that they don't approach it the way that most people normally do. Instead, that they have this analogy where they use like stop and go punctuation to basically explain like how you should be using periods, when you should use commas, colons, that kind of stuff. And it really, really helped me get my foot in the door. It is a fantastic starting point, and from there you can fine tune your knowledge of different concepts. If you have any areas that are kind of tricky as you're going through and practicing, you can go through and hone in on them. But this is truly one of the best ways I recommend starting if you struggle to understand how these different punctuation marks are really meant to flow in the English language. If you get the book, I recommend just going through the whole writing section, doing the passages and doing all the practice exercises. But just keep in mind that like the book is pretty much just good for that and nothing else. I wouldn't really waste your time with the reading and writing sections. So maybe if you want, just go to like your local library and just like borrow the book. Every year edition is like pretty much exactly the same, so it doesn't matter. But the one that I used was this one. Now from here, Prathik, what's next? What should I do in order to continue improving my score? Remember what I said at the start of the video? The writing section is more like the math than the reading. So your next step from here is to just absolutely spam practice problems, practice passages, and practice test sections. The absolute best resource available to high school students are the 10 free college board practice tests available on the Khan Academy website. But here's the thing, I really recommend saving these for right before your exam to use them as practice. So if your exam is coming up soon, go and do those for practice. They are the best. You cannot replicate any college board questions better than college board can because those are the official tests. However, if you have more time to prepare for your exam, rather than wasting your money on a bunch of random textbooks, because I'm gonna be honest, I've tried a bunch of them, and they're all kind of mediocre in the way they replicate the actual SAT, I would just go online and look for free practice passages for writing, and in general, just look for free practice tests. What you're gonna do from there is when you find those free writing passages, just practice with them, and then one of the best ways you can practice is by just taking free practice tests that you find online, full-length practice tests, going to the writing section, and just doing the writing section out of the test. Do it timed, do it in an environment where you just feel like you're taking the actual exam, except 
except all you're doing in the test is just the writing section for practice, finish the section, go through the entire thing, and then go back and analyze it. The thing about the writing section in comparison with the other portions of the SAT is that this is a shorter section. It doesn't actually take that long to do an entire full length writing section. So just use that as your way of practicing. Do an entire section, all of the passages all at once, and then go back and analyze your mistakes from there. If you do enough practice tests, you'll start to realize where some of the weak areas are. So as you're closing in on that perfect score, you can notice where there's some general weak spots in the way that you're approaching the exam, and you can optimize those in order to bring your score to near perfect. I remember for me, in the six practice tests that I did in the two to three weeks leading up to my exam, I was getting a perfect score on every single math section, and in either a perfect score or just one question wrong on every single writing section. Trust me, if you're able to get it down to that level of consistency in your practice, your skills will absolutely translate over to the SAT exam. Trust me on this one. I also feel the need to just briefly mention this SAT writing college panda textbook. A lot of my friends used it and they really, really liked it. I didn't use it personally, so just take it with a grain of salt, but people on the internet and my friends really vouch for it. And I'm gonna be honest, my friends did fantastic on the exam as well. So if you're interested and you want a little bit of extra writing preparation, check it out. I'm obviously not sponsored. Now, we've only talked about preparation up until this point, but test taking technique is absolutely crucial in order to dismantle the SAT writing section. I remember when I first began working with the SAT, I used to just not read the passage and then skip directly to the questions and just like read the sentence around the questions and try to answer it as I go. That is the dumbest strategy ever because the problem is inevitably you are going to reach a question that requires you to actually have context for the passage that you're reading. There's a reason why they're giving you a text to read and they're not just giving you where do I place this comma type questions for the entire exam. If you're using this garbage test taking technique and you reach the question that requires you to have that knowledge of the text, well then you're faced with two options. Either one, you get the question wrong, or two, you go back, you try to skim the entire passage, and then you still get the question wrong because there's no possible way you could have covered all of that content with that level of quality within a 45 second skim. I'm not saying you'll get the question wrong every time, but we're looking for a perfect score here. So consistency in the way that you approach the test is absolutely key. Instead, just read the passage as you go through the text. Start by kind of skimming through what the main content is, and then boom, 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 at some point you'll reach a question. What I like to do is when I see the question, I like to just like finish the sentence or just finish the paragraph, whatever makes sense in context, and then go see what the question is, answer the question, and then move on. Once you get the routine down, it's very straightforward, but more importantly, it's consistent, which I'm repeating time and time again, because that level of consistency in the way that you study and the way that you approach the test is the key to getting a perfect score. You cannot cheat this system here. The only thing to keep in mind is that if you're reading through the passage and you reach a paragraph and there are like brackets in front of each sentence, well then that's your indicator that like, if there's like a bracket one, bracket two, that there's likely going to be a question coming up that's going to ask you to either like insert a sentence or like delete a sentence, rearrange a sentence, do something along those lines. Just when you see that question, you don't have to go like skipping to the end, read all the questions, try to answer that one first. You don't need to do anything weird. Just be cognizant that, that question is coming up. Typically, if you're going through the passage, you're already in the flow of things. If you're just aware of what's going on and you're aware that that question is coming up, then by the time it does come around and you make sure that you're reading well for that like one specific paragraph or whatever, the question will be light work. Those questions are usually not the really hard questions that actually like stump you and make you miss out on points. Just be aware of what's going on so you don't have to waste any extra time trying to reread the passage or anything like that. At this point, you have the entire framework in order to go out there and earn your perfect score in the writing section. So if you've stuck with me this far into the video, I want to give you a bonus tip that can potentially save you up to 20, 30 points on your writing exam. Ever since the SAT last changed its format, vocabulary, or at least knowing all of these big fancy words, has never really been a focus of the writing section. Because of this, people don't really incorporate any sort of vocabulary training into their practice regimen because, let's face it, the vocabulary questions they actually ask you on the SAT are really not that hard. Most middle schoolers are able to answer them. However, with that being said, there is always the chance that you can get a question on the exam that is related to vocabulary that can stump you. The reason I'm saying this is because it happened to me. When I was taking the writing section of my SAT exam, a question came up that just had a vocabulary word, and it was like different spellings, rearrangements of the same word for all the four options, and I had no clue what the right answer was. When that came up, what do you do, right? I stayed calm, I eliminated two of the options that I thought were fake, and I ended up guessing, I'm pretty sure I even guessed the answer correct. But the fact is, 
if you incorporate just a little bit of vocabulary practice, okay, no crazy words, just like basic medium level vocabulary words, making sure you know what they mean, making sure you know like generally how they're spelt, that will help you a lot in the long run. You don't have to do a ton of practice, just go find already pre-made quizlets, go through, do a little bit of practice as you're going, it can truly save you a handful of points in the end. If you have an SAT exam coming up, I wish you the best of luck. If you found this video helpful, I also have guides for the SAT reading and math sections that you can check out on my YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been your boy Pratik. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out.